So to actually familiarize you with a remote function, I'll create two scripts. So I'll create a local script in starter player scripts and a regular script in server script service. Now for this tutorial, I will only be focusing on local to server back to local. So let's say we want to call a remote function, which is inside replicated storage. So we're going to say game dot replicated storage dot remote function. And then I believe a semicolon invoke server. So what this line does is it pings the remote function to send a message to the server. However, if you wanted to ping the remote function inside a server script instead of a local script, then we would just do a very similar thing. Game, replicated storage, remote function, this time invoke client. Now, because we're calling this from the server, we actually do need to pass a player because the game doesn't know who we're actually invoking this to. But OK, because we're only calling from the local script for this tutorial, I will remove this line from the server script. Now, invoking the remote function is the first step. The second step is to have a script which catches this invoke. So again, because we're invoking the server, we need to catch the invoke inside a server script. So you do game dot replicated storage dot remote function dot on server invoke. And then you do equals function, two brackets, and then enter. Now, this may be confusing if you're used to remote events, because for remote events, you would just do replicated storage and just pretend this is a remote event on server invoke, and you would connect it to a function like so. However, remote events function differently, and I don't know why. And again, if we were calling the remote function from the server script and wanted to catch the invoke on a local script, we would do a very similar thing. So remote function on client invoke equals function two brackets enter very simple now for this example because we're invoking the server from a client so a client is sending the message to the server the server needs to know what player sent the message and roblox actually helps us here because when we do on server invoke and an equals function we can pass in a player here. So this player variable is equal to whichever player called the remote function. And again, because this is a variable, you can name this basically anything like this can work, right? But for the sake of simplicity, just name it like player. So if I were to run the game right now, because this local script is inside starter player script, the script will run once we start the game. So it will invoke the server. However, because we have nothing written here, nothing will happen. So what we can do is inside the server script, we could just print out player dot name. So now let's see what happens. So as you can see in the output, the server prints out my name, which is very good. This means our remote function actually works because if I wanted to print out my name from the local script, so game.players.localplayer, which is me, as you can see in the regular script, it prints it out on the server thanks to a remote event. But here it prints it out on the client. Now, the point of remote functions is to actually return things because that's what a function does. When we're invoking the server using a remote function, we're expecting something back. So by default, it will return nothing or nil because there's nothing here. So return nil. This is what it's doing right now. And I can prove this by turning this invoke server into a variable. So I can make local variable equals game.replicated storage invoke server. So then it's going to run this it's going to return nothing, and then this variable will be equal to nothing. So if I were to print out variable, it's going to print out nil. And there we go, it prints out nil in the output. However, if I need to return an actual value, I could just do return and then just a number, five, why not? And so because we return five, this makes the function equal to five, meaning this variable equals five, meaning we're printing out five. And here we go. It prints out five. Of course, right now, this seems very useless. Why can't we just print five instead of having to do this complicated thing? Well, the whole point of remote functions is to do calculations inside of them. So I could do return two plus three, or I can do return 10 minus five. Now, I'm not going to run it. You can do the math in your head, but it will return the sum or difference of those calculations. And this is where we talk about the second main feature of remote functions being values. So you may have noticed that these brackets are empty. So for testing purposes, what if we just do five? So what's going to happen when this code runs is that when we invoke the server, we will pass this five. And so if I go into the server script, how do I make it so that this remote function receives our value of five? Well, the answer is just to go to these brackets and then you separate the player with a comma and then we create a new variable. I'll just call this number. And so then if I return number, which is this, it's going to return our value of five. And then if I were to make a local variable two and I were to just you know copy this line, but instead of five, I were to put 15, 
and I print out variable two. Now it's going to print five and 15. The reason it does this is that functions are effectively like blueprints. So the game doesn't actually know what number means, because what if we just pass a string, for example, or we pass a Boolean value of true, or we could just literally pass nil being nothing. But for this tutorial, we're only going to be passing numbers, which is why I've named this number. But for example, what if I wanted numbers and text? Well, then I would do comma. I would add in some text and I would do the same here. 15. So now we're passing in two values, the value of a number and value of a string. So I can go to my script and I will add a new variable, which I will call text. Now you may have noticed that there are three variables here, but only two here. Why is that? Why is there a player variable when we're actually doing the function, but no player variable when we're calling the function? The basic answer is that Roblox by default actually does pass in an invisible player variable, which we can access here. But in your head, you can omit this player. So now we can just pretend that this player here doesn't exist and we only have number and text. And then we go here, meaning that this is number and this is text. Now, remote functions can't actually return multiple things. They can only return one value. So if I replace this number with text, then when I print these values, it's not gonna print five and 15, it's gonna print the text five and 15. Now there's one last thing you need to know about remote functions and it's better if I just show you. So what I'll do is I'll take this line, I will copy it, then I will delete all of this and I will paste the line that I just copied. And I'm gonna remove these values of the text five and the number five, and I'm gonna remove them here as well. So just player, and I'll remove this line, and we're back to basics. The thing you need to know about remote functions is that the code actually halts until you get a return. Let me show you what I mean. So in Roblox, the code is actually run from top to bottom, meaning this line will be done first, and it's gonna wait for a response. And only after it gets a response, then it's gonna go on to line two, line three, and so on. So I'll make line two print function is complete. Meaning that when we call this function and then when we actually get a return, it's gonna print function is complete. And if we run the game now, the moment I load in, it prints out function is complete. But then if I were to go inside the function and make it wait five seconds, so we're calling the remote function it's waiting five seconds and only then is it returning the nil value. And like I said, when we call a remote function, the code stops until we get something returned. Meaning that when I actually run the game, this line function is complete will only print five seconds after I've joined. So I've joined and as you can see, there's nothing in the output. And there we go. After five seconds, it prints out function is complete. So as you can see, remote functions, while fairly niche, actually do have a lot of function. They're able to communicate from local to server, back to local and vice versa. You're able to pass in whichever variables you want in these brackets and then catch them in these brackets. And it makes sure that the function actually fully completes before moving on to doing any other code. So now with everything I've taught you, I want you to do a solo challenge. You're gonna create a variable named sum and you're gonna make it equal to whatever returns from this function. And then you're going to print whatever gets returned in this function. So your challenge is to make this function return the sum of three numbers. So if I were to put five, comma 10, comma 12. So if I were to run this code right now, your job would be to make the sum equal to 27. So your challenge is to take all of these numbers refer to them as variables, add up all the variables, and then return the sum of all of those variables. To get started on this challenge, go to the description of this video where I've linked a copy of this project. And thank you for watching this tutorial. If there's any topic you think I should cover, just leave a comment and I'll be sure to check it out.